Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I have the pleasure of reviewing a car that you all should be pretty familiar with if you guys have followed the channel for quite some time. This of course is the 2020 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Now this car will always hold a special place in my heart because I actually owned one of these for about three years. I bought the ND back in 2015 when this car first came out. I had a GT, a Grand Touring with a, a six-speed manual. This one here is the 2020 Club RF which means it has the retractable fastback. It's also an automatic transmission, which I actually haven't had a chance to review an automatic Miata of this ND generation. So in today's video, we're going to take this out for a drive. We're going to go over some of the changes that Mazda has made for 2020. And we're going to find out, is the latest Miata still a car that enthusiasts should go for, especially if you're on a budget? Now, of course, the latest Miata hasn't really changed much in terms of the design. When this thing first came out about five years ago, it was a radically styled new Miata. In fact, it still looks good today, so Mazda didn't really need to make some exterior styling changes. They did give this car a refresh for 2019, which included a new engine that I've already reviewed. This also has the new 7,500 RPM Redline 2-liter naturally aspirated four-cylinder, so it's now paired, of course, or this one here is paired with an automatic transmission. Now looking at the styling of the ND Miata, you can see this one here is painted in the new shade of gray called Polymetal Gray. It's a club trim level, which means this is the sportier trim uh, line to choose from. It includes things like the black painted front uh, air dam, or the, the front skirt extension, and then the rear skirt extension. Um, the club also includes uh, these black painted 17-inch um, alloy wheels, which all Miatas, by the way, come standard with full LED headlights, even the base model. And then the club and GTs will have those LED daytime running lights. The GTs will include swiveling adaptive headlights with automatic high beams, which you do not get on the club trim. Now, I actually really like this polymetal gray. They first introduced this color on the Mazda 3 and on the Miata. It looks really good, especially with these black rims. If you guys go for a manual transmission model, there's a Brembo BBS package that rolls in Recaro seats and Brembo uh, brake calipers, which are also painted red, uh, along with BBS wheels. Highly recommend that. You can see the RF model is still the looker of the uh, Miata family. I really like the way this looks with the retractable fastback. Um, it is the power hardtop Miata. Remember, if you guys want a soft top, you can also choose that. It's a manual soft top as well. Looking at the rear of the Miata, you can see the styling hasn't really changed. The club model includes this uh, rear black painted rear lip spoiler. Um, the exhaust system still has that nice twin outlet single exhaust system. And the taillights are kind of an LED combination. This thing is still really small. Miata's weigh, are, they're around 154 inches long and they weigh around 2,500 pounds. The backup camera was added of course, last year, which is in a very interesting position here. It's kind of a really um, vulnerable position. If you guys bump into something, you could damage the backup camera pretty easily. And then if you guys want to open up the trunk, there's a little button here where you can just push this and it'll open up the trunk as long as you have the key fob on you. And the RF model does include a slightly smaller trunk. This measures around 4.5 cubic feet of space versus the soft top models. Now, of course, stepping inside the latest Miata, things haven't really changed. Mazda did add a couple of things last year. However, the big news this year is the addition of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which you will get on this club and the Grand Touring models. You can also see this club has just a cloth manual seat. Um, these seats, of course, are the standard seats. If you guys go for a GT, that'll give you leather buckets. And you can also option in uh, a Recaro seat if you guys spend about $4,600 to get the Brembo BBS package. You can see the interior hasn't changed at all in this Miata. In fact, the club is pretty stark or pretty dark in here. The GT will include um, nicer things like more metallic finishes. I love how the machine gray color or the polymetal gray color kind of extends into the interior. That's always been a signature design of this generation. Miata, when I shut the door, it has a really nice solid thunk, which is again going to give you a nice impression of quality. Uh, and you can see Mazda did replace the key fob this year. This is the newer key that they introduced on the three. I actually prefer the smaller key, if you can believe it. This is just a much larger key, but Mazda again has to go with the newest technology. Starting the vehicle up. 
You can see the RF model included or introduced this 4.6 inch color LCD display, which my 2016 model did not have. And you can see there, there's the Apple CarPlay that comes right up as long as you have your phone plugged in. It's a really nice addition. When the vehicle is stopped, this works as a touchscreen. Remember, this is only a seven inch display, which is definitely starting to look a little bit small versus a lot of the competition, which has much bigger looking displays. This is probably the most dated aspect of this interior. You can see the instrument panel hasn't really changed. You have this leather stitching with the contrast stitching. This is all hard touch plastic materials. They did add a tilt and telescoping steering wheel this year. So it's got a pretty minimal adjustability. So it doesn't really improve the driving characteristic or the driving position for taller drivers that much, but at least they added that feature. This is hard touch plastic, of course, because it's um, a painted plastic area. And then the windows are one touch down for both, but not one touch up. I wish Mazda had just made that a standard. You can see the automatic includes these plastic paddle shifters, which I guess it's nice that they include that. You have your steering wheel audio controls and whatnot. Down here, you have single zone manual climate control, which is to be expected. The GT models will give you the dual zone or or the, the automatic climate control, which is a single zone. You got three level heated seats at least, which is nice when you put the vehicle in reverse. Mazda added a backup camera last year, which is a pretty rudimentary backup camera. It doesn't even include trajectory, but at least it's there. Um, previously, you, Miata didn't even offer a backup camera. There's a sport button here, um, which basically just is really simple. It just turns on and off a sport mode in the transmission and all it adjusts is the transmission programming. And then of course this knob here controls the Mazda Connect head unit there, which I've shown you this before. Mazda Connect head unit is pretty behind compared to a lot of the competition. There's a volume knob over there. Um, there's a little bit of storage over here, a nice padded lid there. And then there's these cup holders, which come right out and you can still put one over here to the side if you'd like. There's no physical glove box here. Mazda instead gives you another storage area down here, um, which is nice. They got rid of the CD player, it looks like over here, which my 2016 model had. And then of course the RF model is a power retractable soft top. So when I push this up, you can see it gives me a little bit of a graphic there in the display showing you when the top is going to be done. which takes about 15 seconds and then it beeps to tell you that it's done. But once you open the top, you can see really nice amount of light um, comes through the windows again. You can, they'll stay up or you can put them down. And then the cool thing about the RF model is you still kind of have this structure back here, um, but there's a nice little pass through area right here with a wind buffeter right there. So overall, I think the RF model is definitely the one to have if you guys plan to be parking this thing outside. But personally, I think I like the simplicity of the soft top model, uh, but this interior still is a little bit on the cram side. For somebody like me, I'm pretty comfortable, um, but you know, obviously if you guys are wider, you're gonna want a little bit more space and that's typically not what the Miata is known for. So Mazda made some extensive changes to under the hood of the Miata last year. So obviously for 2020, things stay the same, which is a good thing because this two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder makes 181 horsepower and 151 pound feet of torque. It's paired with a six speed automatic in my tester. All Miatas of course are rear wheel drive. Now the beauty about this engine is the fact that it actually looks like an engine. There's no ugly plastic covers covering up the engine. It's a very beautifully uh, designed engine bay. In fact, if you guys want to work on this engine, it's a nice refreshing throwback because there's a lot of modifications you can make to Miata. There's a lot of aftermarket support. Now, this higher redline engine makes our red lines at 7,500 RPM, which attributes to the extra horsepower. I tested the manual model last year, loved it. Haven't driven the automatic yet, so obviously we're going to be focusing on that. This particular Miata with the automatic weighs around 2,496 pounds. The RF is about uh, 100 pounds heavier versus the soft top model, so it's, you need to keep that in mind. The automatic also gets slightly better gas miles. This is rated at 26 in the city, 35 on the highway. Premium is recommended for performance, but you can get away with using regular. All Miatas have a pretty small 11 gallon gas tank. And if you guys want the manual transmission, it'll include a limited slip differential. This automatic does not get that of course it also doesn't get the strut tower bar that will help stiffen up the front end so there is a big penalty to gain or to to deal with when you guys go for the automatic model so let me first start off by saying I drive so many different cars in my line of work. It feels incredibly refreshing to get into a Miata. Every time I get into this car, I'm reminded that modern cars today are just so big, they're so heavy, they're so fat. They just take up way too much space on the road. And this car is the equivalent of kind of 
driving a vehicle that takes you back in time because it's so mechanical, it's so small, it feels like I'm driving a toy, and it just feels so alive like with the road. You feel so connected with the road and that's the beauty about a Miata. It's why everybody loves these things. It's why people who like to hate on them have never driven one. And really, the fact that I haven't driven this tr this generation with an automatic, you know, is probably for a reason because I've avoided driving this thing with the automatic, so I was pretty disappointed when Mazda just dropped off this automatic. Now, let's start off by Mazda's six, by saying Mazda's six-speed auto um, was a great transmission about five years ago. It is definitely falling behind in terms of gears, in terms of the quickness of its, you know, the way it shifts. It's a perfectly good transmission in, econ in an economy commuter car or just something that you plan on driving just to and from work. Now in a Mazda Miata, like a sports car like this, the transmission really saps a lot of the fun. In fact, Mazda knows this because they, you know, don't put the limited slip differential and they don't put the, you know, the strut tower bar on this thing to stiffen it up like you get with the manual transmission models. Now, this thing still feels really light and small and I'm starting off this driving scene here with the roof up because I wanted to test out the sol solidity and the quietness since this is the RF model, but, um, remember this got a new engine last year with 181 horsepower. I put the transmission into sport mode here. Let's put our foot down. No drama. Now the transmission looks like it short shifts at around 7,200 RPM. The manual will let you keep going up to 7,500 RPM. It does include manual paddle shifters here. There is a noticeable whine in the engine when you're really rigging out this powertrain. Remember, this is a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder. It's gonna require some revs. This thing feels a little gutless, more so even with the automatic transmission. You know what? It actually still feels relatively peppy once you get the power, you know, up there. Um, zero to 60 times for the manual, you can get them as quick as like six seconds. The automatic probably slows it down by about a second. It feels considerably more sluggish and it just shifts really slowly. I mean, this thing would be awesome with a dual clutch. I hope Mazda is planning on working on developing a dual clutch transmission. They could really use it, but the Miata itself has always been more about handling finesse, and that hasn't changed, of course. The club model has slightly stiffer springs. Um, the steering is just talkative and alive. Um, it's a little bit on the lighter side, but you know, you get that typical Miata body lean here. But the beauty about this car is you, you can essentially just drive this thing this, at the speed limit and you're having a good time. Speed in this Miata is amplified so much. So if I'm just driving like 40 miles an hour, it feels like I'm going 60 miles an hour, which is great for your driver's license if you have too many speeding tickets. This is the kind of sports car that, you know, they say drive it like you stole it. Uh, because it feels like you're going much faster than you actually are. Now I'm noticing with the top up in this RF model, it actually is a little bit quieter than the soft top that I that I had, um, you know, for three years. Uh, there's a reason, obviously, why you want to go with the RF model. It's going to give you that security. It's going to give you a little bit more insulation in here. So it feels like I'm driving more of a coupe versus a roadster, like you get. Uh, with the soft top model. Visibility is also really good. Mazda had their Mazda safety systems for 2020 as standards. You have automatic emergency braking, which they call city safe, smart city brake support, and then you have blind spot monitoring and that lane departure alert, which my tester has as well. That's included when you guys go for the club model, which is again, uh, going to be a nice addition if you guys, uh, you know, go for this higher trim. The top is allowed to be operated up to six miles an hour, so I've got to basically come to a stop here, but once I do that, it takes about 15 seconds for the car to put the top down, which you can do as you creep along here as you approach an intersection. It'll beep and tell you when the top is like done. Not bad. So you can do it while you're creeping along. I'm gonna turn off the stability control here. Let's put our foot down. <laughs> the, the automatic just doesn't have enough power to spin those back tires out. 
<laughs> but you know what? This is still a lot of fun. And you know, the annoyances that I felt with the automatic, they kind of go out of the roof when the top is down. So that's the beauty about having a Miata is just when you have the top down, you feel that wind in your hair. There is more wind buffeting when the top is down when you guys go for the RF model. That's something I definitely noticed. It's not horrible, but the soft top is actually a little quieter when you have the top down, which is interesting. <laughs> Still so much fun to go around corners, but the automatic really just sucks the life out of this car. It's not quite as fast. I can't, you know, get the back end to step out as much as I'd like because the automatic doesn't allow you to have that flexibility like with a clutch pedal. But overall, like, <laughs> there's really nothing else like this car in this price range. And that's the reason why so many people love this thing. Now, in terms of fuel economy, I've been averaging in my week's worth of testing around uh, 28 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good. That's one of the beauties about the Miata is it actually gets good gas mileage for a sports car. So it doesn't break the bank when you go and fill this thing up. You don't even have to put premium in it and it gets good gas mileage even when you're driving it like you stole it. So there's a reason why so many people go for this. I mean, it is just an affordable way to have so much fun. And if you have room in your life and your garage, of course, for a two seat Roadster, the Miata is still definitely going to satisfy a lot of enthusiasts. Just please be sure you learn how to drive a stick until Mazda comes up with a dual clutch transmission or a turbocharged engine, just a quicker shifting automatic. I would like to see Mazda eventually go that route with the Miata. The manual transmission is still the way to go. It's a really easy shifter, really easy clutch. Um, it's a wonderful car to daily drive. And really, if you're gonna drive a toy like this, you may as well drive it in a manual. I know people don't really like to drive sticks anymore, but this is the one that you're gonna to wanna to get that needs to have a manual transmission. So the Mazda Miata is still very much a toy that is relatively affordable, especially by modern car standards. And in the RF trim, you can see Mazda added a nice healthy dosage of style, of course, with the security that you get from a hardtop. I love the new poly metal gray exterior. I love the black wheels that the club model gives you. Really, my only gripe with the Miata is the fact that it's still a little bit on the small side. If you guys are taller people, this thing still won't really fit you all that well. If you guys also want more power, you're still gonna wanna obviously go for something a little bit bigger, more expensive expensive, obviously, but really this automatic transmission for me just sucks the life out of the Miata, which is a shame because most new cars today have automatics that are actually faster versus their manual counterpart. The Miata and of course the BRZ N86 are the last vehicles that are actually slower and you take a huge hit in performance versus going with their manual transmission counterparts. So my recommendation Mazda, either add a turbocharger to this engine or really what they need to work on is a new dual clutch transmission. I would love to see Mazda put in a dual clutch, especially like a seven speed or eight speed dual clutch in this thing, it would really liven up the performance. It would make this automatic a much more appealing choice for enthusiasts. But the beauty about the Miata is the fact that you can get one of these things for still a really affordable price. In fact, if you guys go, go for the soft top model, they start at a little over $26,000, which is not that much more expensive from when this generation first came out. Uh, if you guys go for the RF model, it's gonna start at around $33,000, which is considerably more expensive. But remember, this only comes as a club trim, which is the least expensive way that you can get this uh, body style of Miata. Now, this one here with the automatic stickers for around $35,000, just under 35 was like 34.6, which is too expensive. The automatic is actually $600 extra. I'd say skip it, learn how to drive a manual tr transmission until Mazda comes up with a dual clutch to make this thing faster versus its manual counterpart. Really, if you guys wanna spend uh, the most expensive Miata, you can go for this club RF trim and add that Brembo BBS package on a manual transmission model. And this thing will reach almost $40,000, which is I think a little bit too expensive. The Brembo BBS package is pricey. I'd probably say go to the aftermarket and just add those features if you guys want that. Really, for me, the soft spot is probably a GT in soft top, which is what I ended up buying. The manual transmission, they added a limited slip differential. That's gonna cost you around $34,000, $33,000, which is a huge steal, a bargain for something like this. And really the only competition is the Fiat, the Fiat version of this car, which I would skip because I prefer the naturally aspirated engine that you get with the Miata. It's also built in Japan. It's a Japanese engine, so I expect it to be more reliable versus the Fiat engine. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my overview on the 2020 Mazda MX-5 
of Miata. If you guys are still looking for a really fun, affordable weekend toy, this is still the only game in town, and that's, there's a reason why everybody always says the answer is always Miata. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.